Ooh, I am Mudita, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Today, I want to show you the blueprints I use to balance two belts of equal or unequal amounts into three equal belts, and then how to do the reverse and take three belts and combine them into two equal belts. Let's get right into it. We're going to start with two splitters because we have two incoming belts, and you could probably do this horizontally if you wanted to. I just found this was pretty space efficient going vertically. Now let me give you a quick example. So if I had two completely equal amounts, all I would need to do is something like this. And you can make it really simple. You have your incoming amount going into both of these splitters and then you split it so it's one third here, one third here. So now this has two thirds. And then here and here, here and here. If these two belts are equal, this works out fantastic. Super simple. Say both of these are 200. This works out fantastic. However, if this one's only 100 and this one's 300, this is not going to work out the same because all three of these amounts are going to be different. So if they're two unequal amounts, I need to split these all three ways. So now I have a set of three and a set of three. And now I just need to merge, say, like these two, and then these two, and then those two. And then I'll have three equal belts. So to do that in a compact way, this is what I do. We've got the two splitters, and now we're going to go with three mergers. And those are going to be our three outputs. So we start with the easy ones, and those just plug right in. So the idea here is each one of these outputs from each one of these splitters will go into a different merger. And that way each of these mergers will be completely equal. So this is normally not what I like to do. Gotta go in default. But to make it compact, I couldn't really find a better way than doing the slanted belts. Even with old stubby, you gotta make it quite a bit wider, I think. Now the middle merger is done. It's got a belt from each one of these splitters. So now this bottom one is missing this top one. So we can connect that. And now the top one is missing a belt from this bottom one. So for that, we'll just use a lift. I'll place it there and there. A good old straight mode right into there. So I think we're what one meter over here. So if we move that. All right, so it's basically one and a half by one and a half foundations. And now you can take two belts of any amount, and then on the output, you'll have three equal belts. And every once in a while, you may need to do the opposite. So we're going to start with three splitters because we have three incoming belts. And now we just need two mergers. And so we're basically just doing the reverse. And so each one of these mergers is going to have one of these outputs. So that's easy, and that's easy. And now we just need some more lifts. So on this side, it's pretty easy. All right, and make sure it's facing the right direction. There we go. And then for the last one, we can just bring that one down to there. Now going from two belts to three belts, there's really no limitation on the max amount you can have go in here. You could have both of these be 1200 belts, and as long as the rest of the belts are the correct speed, you'll end up with three equal 800 belts. However, with this, if you plugged in three 1200 belts, there are no belts fast enough to be able to output that much. So do keep that in mind. If you're going from a higher number to a lower number, there is a limitation. Now in my normal playthrough, I'm over 400 hours and I'm doing this video now because this was actually the first time I've needed this in the playthrough. So this isn't actually something I run across very often. Please let me know in the comments if you end up using these sorts of things a lot more often but they do come up from time to time, especially when you're starting to deal with larger amounts and the processes need multiple belts. So let me throw together a quick example for you. The test is ready to go. So let's run through it real quickly. I've got two storage containers. So these are just completely full with iron ingots and this is to simulate a train dropping it off. And for whatever reason, you've got 800 in one and 1000 in the other. And with these numbers, I could do some other load balancing that wouldn't be too difficult. But for an example, I think they work pretty well. Those both feed into the two to three load balancer. So incoming, I have 1800 and then outcoming, we've got three 600 belts that each feed into a group of three constructors. 
Each of these constructors are set to the iron pipe alternate recipe, overclocked to 200%. Each constructor needs 200 iron ingots, and they'll produce 50 steel pipes. That means each group of three constructors needs 600 iron ingots. I figured we could all just appreciate nice round numbers to work with. And then those all feed into the 3 to 2 load balancer, and this is really just to show it off, because a much more convenient way to do this, because you have three equal amounts, would be to place a splitter on the middle one, and then just a merger on either side. And then you would just split the middle one. Actually, that would need to be Mark II, because it would be 150 going into each one of these, so 75 here, 75 here. So if you have three equal amounts, this is a much cleaner way to do it. But I wanted to show it in action, so might as well throw it in here. Now I just need a Mark VI belt here and on the other storage container, and it will come to life. And there we go. That is the two to three and three to two load balancers. I have actually done a four to five load balancer earlier in the playthrough that I forgot about. And so I'll probably show that off later. But if there's any other amounts or any other type of load balancing you'd like to see, please let me know down below. I'll look forward to those. And thanks for watching.